standards, we can satisfy your printing needs. Whether it is for presentation to your clients or for submitting building and subdivision application, make it V-Day Printing Services. Whether drawing by hand or with computer-aided softwares, we will plot your negatives and print the copies as you need. We do high-quality white paper printing that is water-resistant and never fades, unlike traditional blueprint. For more information, call VJ Printing at 893-2266. This is for the Zika virus. Portland, be aware. Zika is here. The Portland Health Department invites you to a public health forum on Thursday, October 13th at the NCB Car Park. We start at 5 p.m. Come and hear about the complications associated with the Zika virus and how to deal with them. Have your questions answered and your concerns addressed. There will be prizes and surprises for the first 40 registered persons. Refreshments will be provided. Carry a friend and family. This information is for everybody. This is the Zip Alert. Zip Alert. This is the Zip Alert. Okay, welcome back, listeners. And as I told you before, I went on the break. I have two special guests in studio with us this morning. We have Dr. Sharon Lewis, who is the Medical Officer of Health from the Portland Health Department, and Mrs. Valerie McCleary, and she's the Parish Health Education Officer. And as I said before, there's gonna be a town hall meeting on Thursday the 13th at the NCB parking lot, and that's in the Port Antonio Square, and it's all about, all about Zika alert and prevention. Now, Dr. Lewis, could you tell, give us some background on why are you having this town hall meeting? Good morning to you and to your listeners. We are having this town hall meeting as the Ministry of Health has recognized that we need to ensure that the public is fully aware as to the risks of contracting Zika, how it is contracted, the clinical symptoms, and the complications of the disease and what we can do to prevent ourselves from getting it, what we can do to prevent the spread of it. And so we want to make sure that we interface with the public. There are a lot of myths out there as to how Zika is spread. We want to dispel the myths. We want persons to understand the importance of how the environment is kept because we know that the main um, vector that carries it is the Aedes mosquito and it usually lives in our surroundings. How we keep our surroundings is very important. We will be looking at um, various things be the antelita law and you know we'll be covering a wide range so clinical environmental legal we want the public to be fully aware and those myths that are out there we want to clear those things up so people understand their own responsibility how they can be involved in protecting their health okay thanks for giving us that insight but i have this problem in my community where by six o'clock in the evenings, I see all of this smoke. Mm -hmm. Persons, you know, understandably lighting bush fires to say they are trying to get rid of mosquitoes, which in fact irritates other persons' asthma, sinuses, and so you're talking about the importance of cleanliness. Does burning, that's a part of the legal thing. Right, so that is not the recommended way to deal with the mosquitoes. When we are talking about what it is that the public can do, we are talking about proper disposal of garbage so we don't have the collection of stagnant water um, you know, in, in the in various the, it, receptacles around the homes because that's where the ADs tends to breed in and around the homes. So we do not recommend the burning. We do have other means. We, in the vector or vector control unit, does fogging from time to time based on the um, data that comes in because, you know, there are persons who will want fogging everywhere and any time, but it's the Aedes that carries it, and some of the other mosquitoes are not Aedes, they're just nuisance mosquitoes. So persons may say, boy, you know, why is it that we don't see them in every community? So we go based on the data, but the important thing is what persons can do to get rid of the potential breeding sites in, in, in and around the homes, the workplaces, the schools, 
all those places where people inhabit. Okay, understandably. Uh, Mrs. McCleary, I remember a couple of years ago, we had individuals who said they came from the health department who would walk, basically go to every home investigating to see if you have receptacles, if you have garbage in your, in, your, in your yard or in your surroundings. I haven't seen those persons around. What's happening? Good, after, good morning, morning, listeners. Those persons are still around. Okay. Yeah. We have a very efficient team. That's the vector team. And they collaborate with the public health inspectors and they visit the homes. Uh, but the reason why you saw that influx of individuals, because at that time, there was a need. At that time, we had something happening. I think it was the first um, Chick -chick -V. Chick -V. Mm -hmm. right? And so we had those individuals, we had team, we had volunteers coming in and going to the homes and really trying to educate individuals as to how to keep uh, or to, to prevent this disease from spreading. And so, yes, those individuals are, are still around, around, but what I notice is that it seems as if a little education or a little knowledge has been put into place because some individuals are making effort to cover their jobs and to apply the different um, strategies that were given to them. Some individuals are applying it and so we um, are sort of encouraged and so that is what could be one of the reasons why you don't see many of us around. That's true and we also have a regular garbage collection now I have to admit so <laughs> I think that could be another thing. Okay, um, on Thursday, who, are, who is going to be there for the town hall meeting? Well, we hope to have a panel um, which will involve members of the health team. Um, I'll be there, or chief public health inspector will be there, and we hope to also have our senior medical officer from the hospital who happens to be an obstetrician gynecologist to speak a bit about the impact of Zika in pregnancy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can give us a little insight on that because I know that it's taking over. It's not just the Zika that we are talking about now. Mm -hmm. It's dealing with the impact, the impact on, right. you know, and they've, they've, they've even said, um, do not plan on getting pregnant. Well, the ministry <laughs> has said that they are recommending to persons that, you know, probably at this time, persons can delay. We can't, they can't tell yeah, people not can, to. Yeah, you cannot. You know, mm -hmm. put the, the advice is there that, um, you know, in this time where persons can contract Zika, we know of the potential implications of, um, the, the development of a condition called microcephaly, which I suppose persons have heard yes, we of have. In, in, in the news, and that's a situation where the brain, you know, is smaller than it should be, and there are potential um, developmental problems that that child can have. Now, I should mention that, you know, while we're hearing a lot about microcephaly in the news now, it is not something that is new. You know, there have been other conditions in pregnancy that can cause this, you know, other infections, um, well, toxoplasmosis, HIV, other things that can cause it. But it's just that it is now topical because we have seen an increase in, in the, the, number the number since cases. Zika has been going around. Well, um... Do, okay, you're going to have a panel. Yes. So I'm there. Yes. Can I ask questions? That is the aim of it, and that's why it is called a town hall meeting, because we want people to come and uh, share whatever concerns they have. If there's anything they're unclear about, we want to you know, let them leave there fully informed and clear on all the issues relating to Zika and fully understanding how they can contribute to limit the spread of Zika. You mentioned dispelling myths. I was one of those who got chick fee. And I was one of those who said, I, mean, I think this thing caused by a mosquito. So um, that's one of the myths that, you know, we ha that's out there. Yes. We don't think it's caused by a mosquito. We think there must be something else that's airborne. So it's the same thing with Zika. Persons are saying Zika is not caused by a mosquito. Yes, yes, and we hope to address that as well, looking at the history of Zika from where it started out in the um, African continent and eventually made its way around the world to the American continent. 
right? So yes, because I'm one of those who are wondering, say, we come tell me, say, a mosquito fly from where America come down. No, it's people <laughs> traveling, infected persons traveling. And you see, because the world has become such a global community with, within that's one true, day, it can true. be in one uh -huh. part of the world to another. And persons probably, when they land, they are looking well enough, but they may be harboring the infection within them and at some point they manifest and then they become infectious. So... That, that's part of the problem. So, although we are going to be educated, we are also going to be entertained. Yes. Tell us about the entertainment package, because we are going to be, I mean, persons are going to be there starting at 4.30. Um, there must be some break after, because it's, it's a serious topic. Yeah. So, there must be something to lighten the, the air. I am just asking everybody to come out, because we have what to lighten the air. We have a great artist that comes right here from Portland. They call him Beasting. I ever hear about that one? Yes, and we were, play we were playing his song. Beasting. Ah, oh, <laughs> that's the song I heard when I came in. Beasting will be there. And he has his composition and he's going to do songs for us. We have health staff. We are very talented around here, you know. We have yes, I remember that gentleman who's always praying when you, when you go to clinic. <laughs> <laughs> What's his name? Could you just... Mr. Smith. Mr. Smith, yeah, yeah Mr. He's Smith is always he's our he's prayer all, warrior. Yeah, he's all, he prays every morning when you go there. Everybody know Mr. Smith, and when he's he's, a, he's such a pleasant man. He's always singing, so he'll be part of the entertainment. Well, I'm not sure. We tell, have, tell, we tell, have, him that, tell him that I'm coming to hear him sing. Well, I will tell him because <laughs> I want him there too. We, I think we are, we are expecting the support from all our health staff. But we have talented individuals right there in our health department. And I just want you all to just come out and hear them. We're going to have composition. We are going to have different things. People are going to come and we're going to ask you to make your, 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 your jingle right on the spot. And we have prize for you. Yeah, that's why, and I see yes. you have entered the Zika DJ competition we have DJ and win prizes. Dance. We have mosquito dance. We have every <laughs> single one like that. Prestige, get to the mosquito dance. All the mosquitoes <laughs> just run, come, start the practice. One. Start practice from now. You understand? So that you can be the winner. And I think every single individual that um, participates, we're going to have a little token for you. And what is a mosquito prevention tool? What is a mosquito? Win mosquito prevention tools is what? All right. Destroyer? It, well, <laughs> we, I don't think we're going to have a smoking destroyer. Okay. But we're going to have um, vape. Rep we are going to have repellents. repellents. Okay. We are going to have mosquito nets. Um, well, I'm Come not sure about the prestige, mosquito nets. We're going to have, prestige, we're gonna have DJ, We're going to have DJ nets for your dance. drums. We are, we're going to have a number of drum covers. The net drum covers. Oh. So if you have your drum, mm -hmm. make sure you are there so that you can and even we, answer a question. We're going to have question and answer session, you know. So you're going to come and you're going to listen and you're going to answer your question and you're going to get your token. Now, the best part about it is that the first 30 persons that are there, that register, there's a token for That's you. That's not fair because I leave work at 5 o'clock. Well, that is not fair. What we can send somebody go home. You can seat? still get something when you come. Oh, okay, you <laughs> can still. There's something for you when you come at five o'clock. When you come at five thirty at the real forum, when you're gonna ask your questions and you're gonna get your feedback from that. It's a, it's, it's. It's some high people we're going to have there, you know. Doctor going to moderate that. <laughs> and um, you're going to write So we are, we are going to come with our concerns, our questions, come everything. Come with them. They will be answered. And at the end of it, maybe we'll get a little drink because we're going to have a little um, refreshments at the end, you know. Okay, so after all of that stress and saying, boy, doc, why? What, what we need to do, what else? After we finish talking and him something, we have something to quench your thirst. You're going to get the information and then quench up your thirst and then go home. <laughs> Thank you very much. Prestige, do you have any questions for the, the doc? Doc. Yes, sir. What I want to ask you, right? Mm -hmm. For parents home how can they what what they should do to more prevent mm -hmm. and these mosquitoes from breeding up okay so as we mentioned the whole fact that um the mosquitoes tend to breed in and around the homes yeah so mrs mcclary al already spoke about covering the drums so whatever receptacle that you have that um 
you used to catch rainwater and so on, because we know some communities have a water problem. Make sure that you either cover the um, drums with a proper mesh, or you drop oil in it to create a film over the water so that the mosquito can't get to lay its eggs there and you know that can breathe and live. Or you, if you have um, flowers in vases that you know those um, flowers that grow in water twice weekly, you wash that out. Also, you try to, I you know it's a bit, maybe a bit expensive, but meshing your doors and your windows prevent them from um, entering, you know. And what you can do for some of the children is also to spray the repellent on them, the exposed areas of um, their skins to help them, to prevent them from being bitten. So it's basically, you know, around the home checking, see where water is settling, sometimes even on the roof, in your gutters you know, water is settling there. So to make sure that these things are regularly cleaned. Is it a good idea to bore all these um, empty cans? Yes, that's a good idea. That's, that's very good because sometimes, even though you may properly bag, bag them and leave them out by the skip or wherever, sometimes dogs do get access to the bags, tear them up and they're strewn all over the place. So it's good to bore the cans so that in case water does get into them, it cannot um, remain there and settle. I was just looking at a flyer, and could you just give us some of the symptoms of Zika? Okay, all right. So with the Zika, you can have a fever, right? In fact, any viral illness can um, cause to have a fever, can have a rash, and the rash may um, be very itchy. In fact, a number of persons say that the rash that accompanies this sometimes even itches more than the one with chick V. Oh, you may also get um, redness of the eyes, but without the pus. So, you know, usually when um, pink eye, the, the, the bacterial one is going around, there's a little pus in the eye with the redness, but this one has redness, but there is no pus with it. You can get joint pains, swelling with um, the areas where they joints are paining, pain in the muscles, and so on. So those are the more common ones, but then you can have the complications with the guillain barre you know, and that is where you usually have weakness of the limbs coming in. And I suppose you have been hearing about even some prominent persons in our country who have been affected by the guillain barre And usually the, cla the, the, the classical textbook tells us description is that it ascends from the lower limbs going up but we are finding that some of the persons who have had it have not necessarily had it in that um, way but they do lose function in some of the limbs as the limbs become weak and they would have had a recent history of a fever or um, some joint pains and then we suspect you know that they are probably having GBS as a result of the Zika. Yeah so for, for, for the listening audience out there right? Yes. Is it a cure um, for Zika, are they only have um, treatment? That is it. So that's a very good question. We do not have a um, cure in that you take a pill and that gets rid of the virus yeah. altogether. It's what we call the treatment of the symptoms, symptomatic treatment. So we give you medications to treat the headache, to treat the fever. You know, we can give you antihistamine eye drops to treat the redness in the eyes and so on. But to actually get rid of the, the virus out of the system, the body's own immune system will do that over time. The, vi the symptoms of the Zika usually extends from two days to seven days, right? So usually after that, persons, you know, after to that time period, persons go back to normal, usually. Now, um, what we should note is that, unfortunately, most of the persons who will have the virus will not actually have any symptoms. Yeah, this says you know only saying? one in four persons That's with it. Zika infection develop symptoms. Right. So I could be infected and... I don't even know I don't even know. Right. Mosquito bites me, go ahead, and that, that person develops this symptom, um, you know? Yes, yes, yes. Ooh. So that is why we really stress the prevention. We can't just look at the fact that, okay, well, you know, I'm fine, so I don't need to worry about it. We stress the prevention because since it can also be transmitted to the unborn fetus, you know, and we are concerned about the microcephaly, we want everybody to be involved in being responsible about protecting ourselves, keeping the environment clean so that we can ensure the well-being of ourselves and our family. Thank you, Dr. Lewis. And I just saw a message. It com it's coming from Dr from Captain Baker telling, to say, telling us to say hi to you. Okay. From hi, <laughs> Captain Baker. <laughs> um, so, listeners, remember that on Thursday, that's Thursday the 13th of October, 
at the NCB parking lot, and that's, you know, the Port Antonio Square, right at the clock, right where NCB and post office is, right there, so there's a Zika, Zika alert and prevention town hall meeting, and that starts at 4.30 p.m. I just want to emphasize that at 4.30 to 5.30, that's the entertainment session, or we call it edutainment, because you'll be educated and you'll be entertained. I, I'm during, it's during that time we're going to be having our um, prizes and surprises. Now, afterwards, we're going to go into the meat of the matter at 5.30 when we will have our invited, our stakeholders, we are hoping to have the mayor and um, all the invitees, right? So it's it's a two. It be the, 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 at five at four thirty we have that pre um, show. Then at five thirty we have. So we just move from four thirty right into the program. Thank you, Ms. McCleary. So, listeners, remember that you need to do your part in preventing mosquito breeding. You need to search inside and around your home once per week for Aedes mosquito breeding sites and destroy them. You need also need to tightly cover drums and other containers used to store water. Wash flower vases and pet bowls and clear roof, roof gutters at least once per week. And as Prestige reminded us, punch holes in tins, and you're also to recycle or dump your garbage properly. So remember, you need to prevent mosquito breeding by ensuring that around your homes are clean. And as Dr. Sharon Lewis, she emphasized the importance of cleanliness to prevent mosquito breeding and also to prevent Zika from spreading. Any last words, Doc? Well, I'm hoping that everyone will come out because we really want persons to have the right information. And as I said, don't think that because it hasn't affected your family yet, or at least you may not even be aware if you have been affected, that you know it's, it's nothing that you need to be concerned about. This Zika prevention is everybody's business. It can cause serious um, effects, especially to the unborn children. So we want everybody to understand their roles. And some of the things that we want um, persons to understand is that they need to, even in how they dress, you know, wear light colored clothing, and preferably, especially at that time when the mosquitoes tend to be more active, dusk and dawn, you know, long sleeves, blouses and shirts and long pants. Use the mosquito repellents, those containing DEET, right? And where you can afford it, sleep under a mosquito net, all right? So let us all act now to prevent ourselves from getting Zika. Thank you, Dr. Lewis. So once again, in studio with us are Dr. Sharon Lewis, and she's the Medical Officer of Health for the Portland Health Department, and also Mrs. Valerie McCleary, and she's the Parish Health Education Officer. And remember that there's a Zika alert and prevention town hall meeting, and that's presented by the Portland Health Department. And it's this Thursday, October 13th at the NCB parking lot, right at the clock, right at post office there. And it starts at 4.30 p.m. And remember the entertainment part is from 4.30 to 5.30, but you need to be there at from 4.30 so you can win, you can enter competitions and win prizes. And remember you have mosquito prevention tools and many more. And you will also be entertained by upcoming artists, and you can link with your, the members of your health department. So you need to go be there for the Zika Alert Prevention Town Hall meeting Thursday, October 13, starting at 4.30. Go to talk about your concerns. Go with all your questions, everything. Write them down, list them. Maybe some of them you'll hear other persons ask because all of, we all have the same questions. So you, you might get answers even before you ask your questions. But just go there, learn more, educate yourself on Zika, preventing the virus, pre preventing, you know, mosquito breeding, all of them something. There. You just need to go, listen, be educated and entertained. So then put it edutained. You know, same like styles, you, you, you listen to styles, you're edutained educated and entertained, and it's starting 4.30, NCB parking lot, Port Antonio Square, 
Thursday, October 13. It's a town hall meeting on Zika alert and prevention. Once again, thank you, Dr. Sharon Lewis and Mrs. Valerie McCleary. Thank you very much for having us. Thank you very much for having us. This is the inspirational moment on Styles FM. Hey, this is Coach Mark with your midday motivation. And the thought I'd like to leave with you today is, why do I succeed? I succeed because I'm willing to do the things that others are not. I will fight against the odds. I will sacrifice. I'm not shackled by fear, insecurity, or doubt. I feel those same emotions that others feel, but I drink them in and then I spit them out. I am motivated by accomplishment, not pride. Pride consumes the weak, kills their heart from within. If I fall, I will get up. If I fall, I will get up. If I'm beaten, I will return. I will never stop getting better. I will never give up, ever. I will never give up, ever. That is why I succeed, and that's exactly why you're going to succeed as well. Thank you and have an awesome day. That was the inspirational moment on Styles FM. Hey, Styles FM peeps, it's here. It's here at last. Do you want to blend in with the Styles FM family? Do you got styles all day, every day? If your answer is yes, then purchase your Styles FM t-shirts today. We have sizes ranging from small to extra large, only for you, our noble listeners. Be a part of the Styles FM family by making your order for our comfortable and high-quality t-shirts now for only $2,000. Stocks are limited, so get Get your Styles FM t-shirts today. Call 286 9